Marty Feldman Comedy Machine, starring... We'd think he'd have them fixed. Roger Moore. Ah, oh, there's perfection. Alan Price and Georgie Fame. Very good, yes. Spike Milligan. Well, into each life some rain must fall. I'm home, Margaret, my dear. Yes, dear. Half an hour early, you'll notice. And I'll tell you why. I'm going to murder you. I've been planning it for months. I've got a perfect alibi. I made a tape of myself dictating a letter at the office. That means that people either side of my office will still think I'm there. I slipped out of the building through the tradesman's entrance, wearing a beard and dark glasses, and slipped into the house through the coal chute. And now, Margaret, my dear, you're going to die. Die, do you hear me? Die, die! And now for the pleasure of seeing you dead. Surprise! 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 Happy birthday to you! I'm, I'm sorry to have to call at such an awkward hour, but the pain really is killing. I, I, I can't put up with it any longer. I, I'm very sorry. I'm not sure which one it is. I think it's the one right at the back on the right here. It might be the one next to it. I, I, I... Hello? Hello, anybody? Oh, oh. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Had to pop out for a moment. Mm. Nurse is a bit on edge. You know what things are. You're a man. I wanted you to see me about it. It's this tooth. It's the one the right tooth. at the back here. Oh, well, well, back in it. Let's have you up a little then, oh, shall we? Well, <laughs> open wide. Uh, there we are. That's, oh, my goodness. You do have some bad ones, don't you? Mm. <laughs> Look at that one, for instance. Ah! Yes. Oh, oh, it's a molar extraction, I'm afraid. Oh. Nurse? Nurse? I'm not. Coming. <laughs> oh, do come on, squirrel. <laughs> what? It's a molar extraction. <laughs> oh, now come on, who's a cruel dentist? Come on, now, now, button up, squirrel. Now you put my extractors in the sterilizer, and Daddy will buy you a lot of lovely golden acorns. All right, squirrel. There's a good squirrel. Now, where, where are we? Oh, yes. Mm. Yes. It'll have to come out, I'm afraid. Yes, well, can I have gas? Gas. Mm. <laughs> I wish you hadn't brought that up. We're all out of gas. Well, we had a bit of a party last night, you see, and we were <laughs> blowing up balloons and sniffing it all in fun, of course. And the worst of it is, I uh, can't give you an injection either. Why not? Well, we have uh, no needles. We were using them for darts. Darts? Yes. And... But I tell you what I can do for you. If you bend your head forward, I'll give you a sharp clip on the side of the neck like that. All right. No, no, no. I don't want you to put me out. Well, you'll have to have something. Uh, a brandy. Yes. A good brandy. stiff brandy. <laughs> Dirty glass, I'm afraid. No, I don't... I... No, I don't want alcohol. Just, just take the tooth out. That's all. The pain is killing me. Are you sure? Quite. Oh, cheers. <laughs> he did that. Oh. Blast! Oh. Bloody lights again. Oh, never mind. I've got a match here somewhere. Hmm. There we are. Open up. Uh, now you've blown it out. I thought... It's not much use anyway. I can't see much from outside. I'll have to get inside. Huh? Give me a leg up, will you, squirrel? That's it. Right. Ah! Oh, God. <laughs> right. right, I'm going to try and find which one it was. Uh, you ready? Yeah. Uh... No, no. Ready? How? No. Now let's try the other side. This one's rotten to the root. Yes, I think this is it. I struck pain. I found it. Yes. Well, let's get to work. I can't budge it with the spoon. Uh, I'll have to use dynamite. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Now, uh, whatever you do, uh, don't swallow. Yes, sir. Oh. Uh, We're all done for. Uh, now, if you do feel the urge to swallow coming on, uh, just give me a shout, uh, uh, and I'll find something to hang on to. Uh, you ready? I, I don't understand. Uh, hold on, boy. Hold on. Hold on. Here. Uh, uh, you can't uh, do blasting now. I've got a shift working down there. It's all right. I'm a dentist. Oh. That's all right then, boy. -o. You see, we have to be careful, isn't it? I mean, hold on a minute. All right, lad, she's a dentist. <laughs> we'll keep a welcome in the hillside. We'll keep a welcome in the vale. You're very nice. Can I go on? Beautiful, isn't it? Yes, it's Carry good. on, lad. I tell the lad. Keep going, boys. Uh, mind your head, Yantu. Look how mind your head. Uh, <laughs> right, set. Uh, He's itching, I've got to what? Sw what? Gotta swallow. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. sleazy little hotels, meeting on trains like this. I won't behave like a criminal any longer. I'm going to tell my wife tonight. Tonight, do you hear me? I'll tell her I love you, and I want to spend the rest of my life with you, and only you. Anything you say, Bruce.
Wait, stay up.
Pre-recorded London. Your international music hall. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Good evening, good evening, everybody. And once again, it's time to start the show, so strike up the band. Light the lights and curtain up as we take you away in the wonderful world. The curtain up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's get the show off to a flying start with the brilliant Belgian juggling team of the two Loom Bogles. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for the two Loom Bogles. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my brother and I would now like to try for you an impossible trick. We would like to juggle with a 37 piece Bone China dinner series. Thank you very much. Moving right along now from Munich, the city that gave you World War II, the amazing Senior Omi Poloni, the world's greatest fire eater. Ladies and gentlemen, Senior Omi Poloni. Tibet, Captain Lhasa Prayer Wheel. Can we get a bloody curtain up? <laughs> Captain Lhasa Prayer Wheel, the world's greatest eagle tamer. Curtain up! Up! <laughs> now! Over the whip! Come along, let's go! Come on! Hey! And away, can we have that curtain up, please? Uh, we say adios to Captain Prayer Wheel, and now International Music Hall presents its feature, its starring attraction of the evening, the tremendous acrobatic family who thrilled the whole world when they all escaped from East Berlin, packed together in the same sausage. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the flying Grobstocks! The curtain up. Up 
Oliver Grubstock will support his entire family with his bare hands as they form their famous human pyramid. Are you ready, Papa Grubstock? Yeah, kiddo! Sonia! Ah! Carl! Petro! Ah! Master! Hey! Quick! Ah! Ah! Alright! Alright! Bring on Bruno! Everybody, thank you very much. And with that, that brings our curtain down, our curtain down for this evening. And I. <laughs> curtain up, curtain up, curtain up. And we'd just like to say goodnight on behalf of everybody who's here. In London, in England, we'd just like to say goodnight. And thank you for coming to the show. See you next time. Next time. <laughs> well, um, while the curtain never actually came down in that sketch, I did. I fell from the top of it and I broke my arm. Look where they've set it. I could get busted for just walking down the street. Look at that. <laughs> Someone once said, anyway, uh, the show must go on. Um, I don't know what it was. It wasn't an actor. It was probably the producer. Um, I can't do very much for the rest of the show, but I can bring you some of the latest news. Could I have some of the latest news? Thank you. Tonight, tragedy on the streets. Sir Hubert Bentlock, the crossword puzzle champion of Great Britain, was struck down by a drug-crazed hit-and-run marathon runner. He was rushed to an eight-letter word beginning with H, and doctors fear that before the night is over, he will be a four-letter word beginning and ending with the letter D. <laughs> New York. Customs officials boarded the Queen Elizabeth in a surprise raid this morning and found a Rolls-Royce limousine valued at 20,000 pounds cleverly hidden in a shipment of heroin. <laughs> Huliaki Land, Africa. A big day as the tiny nation celebrates its first day of independence. On hand, representing Great Britain, their rulers for over 250 years, was the Viscount and Viscountess Simplington Ramsgate and their military attaches. Covering the event is our man on the scene, Jason Pettypoint. This is Jason Pettypoint reporting to you from Bulliakiland. <clears throat> there is a great deal of feeling in this tiny new nation. It is Independence Day, an independence which many feel is long overdue. With today's ceremonies, this proud, fierce nation has come to bid farewell to its English master in the person of Viscount Ramsgate, who has been Bully Yakiland's stern governor for over 40 years. Viscount Ramsgate is known throughout Bully Yakiland as Buana Bulawi, which very freely translated means Great White Creep. Uh, great White Queen uh, from over water, she... Yeah, yeah. And that moving message will give you some idea of the bond which exists between Her Majesty's government and these simple folk. Now, the first event is a presentation to the Viscountess Ramsgate of the Bulliakiland National Flower, the beautiful and colourful night-blooming Trenis fresorosis, or, as it is more commonly known to English gardeners, the man-eating daffodil. <laughs> these flowers are a symbol of the gratitude these natives feel for their former rulers. And with the presentation of the flowers, the ceremonial begins. It is a festive occasion with each unit in full military garb and first to pass the review, if I'm not mistaken, no, I am not, it is the Bully Akilan 43rd Battalion Darts Throwers. <laughs> ah! 
It is impossible, ladies and gentlemen, adequately to describe the pageantry and splendor of this day. Dressed in full military regalia, the regiment waits its turn to pass in review for the ex-governor of this tiny nation. I believe that coming up next is the famous Bully Yakiland Horse Fusiliers, whose commander has just given them the command to put their horses into a gallop and... <laughs> yes, this will be a parade to remember, ladies and gentlemen. And if my ears do not deceive me, it is the Bully Yakiland Air Force, yes! Yes, a single-engine World War I surplus biplane. It's going into a dive. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, performing a diving salute to the party Viscount Ramsgate is the wing commander of the Bully Yakiland Air Force, Colonel Lubutu Kamikaze. <laughs> this is quickly followed by a 21-gun salute. gesture to show the depth of their gratitude for over 200 years of colonialism, the ceremony of the human sacrifice. Speed, speed, the crowd is roaring, and I believe the Viscount Ramsey, Ramsgate, is going to say a few words. It is my wife and my uh, last request. But if it is your will uh, that we end up as a uh, sisko man, we should both like to be placed on the same skewer. What say you with me? Mr. Pileman, Mr. Pileman, travelling on flight 406, please go to the information desk opposite gate 12. Mr. Pileman, Mr. Pileman, travelling on flight 406. Please go to the message desk opposite gate 16. Mr. Pileman, go to the information desk at once. Mr. Pileman, please report to the message desk. Mr. Pileman, I called you first. Don't listen to him. He's playing on your sympathies. There's an important message for you at the message desk. Have I ever lied to you before? Mr. Pileman. Mr. Pileman, look at me when I'm talking to you. He hasn't had an important message for years. <laughs> That's a lie. He's just jealous because I'm stereo. Go to the message desk. Information desk. Message. Information. Message. <laughs> Leave him alone. He's mine. That's the last one you'll ever take away from me. Hate the death, Fireman! <laughs> Fireman, I'm going faster. I don't blame you. It was society. I never had a chance. My mother was a jukebox in a strip club. And my father was a Japanese transistor radio. Mixed marriages never work out. Oh. Get back, officer. Back, back, I said. I'm not spending the rest of my life on a prison ball. You'll never take me alive. Gladys Small Piece reporting on the fabulous world of the cinema. Uh, I am standing outside the office of one of the truly legendary figures in the world of film business, Mr. Mr. Brandish Wormwood, producer, director, and twice winner of the George Raft Award for Cinematic Integrity. In order to bring you a true portrait of the man, I am here at his office, along with my tape recorder and an inexhaustible fund of cliches. All right? Interview with Brandish Wormwood, take one. <laughs> yeah, girl. Now. Keep it down two. That's good. One, two. Hand back. That's better. I'd never like to. Any fish. Uh, Mr. Wormwood. <laughs> Mr. 
It's worm, sir. Keep it on that. He's talking. <laughs> say, say that again. Mr. Wormwood, fancy that. I took a snooze while I did the invented talkies. Quiet on the set! Quiet on the set! Mr. Wormwood, Wait I... a minute. Wait a minute, son. Say, say that again. <laughs> Mr. Wormwood. Oh, no, no. <laughs> say it, no, no. Say it deep for the motion, right from the very bowels of one's own being, full of tortured ingenuity. <laughs> Mr. Wormwood. You're fired. Cut! <laughs> Mr. Mr. Wormwood. Mr. Wormwood, yes? I, I am Gladys Smallpiece, yes. the celebrated movie buff. I don't need my movies buffed, as long as they're fresh and clean by six o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Silence on the set! Come on, Howard! Howard! Howard, man! Come on, right, man! Right! Sir, sir, sir. May I ask who, who that is in oh, there? Oh, it's a famous uh, Howard Albrecht, the great Hollywood writer. Come on, Howard! I will paint! I will paint the devil's tool! Cut the camera too, cut right. Isn't he dead? Of course he's dead. That's why he's so reliable. He died in 1936. I accepted one of his scripts and he dropped dead with shock. But he still writes three pages a day, dead on time. <laughs> time is money, Howard. Right, right, damn you. Right, you hear me? Wait a minute, just a minute. Hello. Get me Wallace Beery. All right, then get me son of Beery. Right, get me son of son of Beery. Right. Action two, camera two, one to him. Right. Uh, Mr. Wormwood. Yes. In 1938, I you began history. filming your greatest epic, yes. The History of the, the World. The History of the World. That's right. That could be right. Now, people are beginning to wonder if the film will ever be finished. Oh, we had problems. First of all, the picture had uh, opened with Moses on Mount Sinai. Moses on Mount Sinai taking the Nine Commandments. Nine? Only nine? Oh, yes. My agent took one for commission. Unfortunately, oh. it was adultery. <laughs> Come on, Howard, let's go, man. Come on, man, we need work on you. Work. Uh, 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 Could we get back to the film? Number two, lights action room, two, one. One to two, take four and nine, one. Keep the, on that, right. The, fil the film, sir. The film. Yes, well, finally, we had to drop the Old Testament. Got too heavy. Also got too expensive. And on top of that, we're getting too Jewish. So, kapow, we went for the old Christianity bit. We had the lions eating the Christians, kapow! We had the martyrs being beaten to pieces by the gladiators, kapow! Then we had the Romans beating the hell out of those poor little Christian children. Beat, 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 they were going, beat, 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 all the blood lying on the ground. But that's what the public wants today, laughs! And you feel <laughs> Sure, brother. See that? But this is, uh, seems to be a very unusual way to keep film. I mean, shouldn't the picture be in cans? Oh, of course, it's be in cans. Monte Carlo, Hollywood, come on, get going, ladies and Go, man, go! Uh, Any uh, work on you? Get to the Hello, hello! Get me Rudolph Valentino. Dead? Or make it long distance, right? Uh, then, sir, if I'm not mistaken, you went on to film the Crusades, uh, the Dark Ages, uh, the flowering of Western civilization, uh, and then your production ground to a halt. May I ask why? Oh, we had cast problems, you see. The three stooges quit on me. Right, quiet on the set. Lights, action. Cut! Print that one. Howard! Let's hear from you, man. Let's hear from you. Don't you forget now that I've got your wife and kids locked up in the boiler room. Uh, tell me, Mr. Howard, uh, will your film, The History of the World, ever be finished, do you think? I hope not, because the film is the world. The world only exists because I'm filming it. The minute I say, the end, camera two, good, then the world will be finished. But that is ridiculous, sir. Ridiculous? Listen, you're only here because I cast you in the part. You're not a person, you're an extra. I made you, and I'm gonna break you. I'm gonna cut you out of this film. That got rid of him. <laughs> right, one o'clock, that's everybody back at five, past. All except you. Work, you hear me? Don't forget I got your wife and this in that boiler room. I made out here for a film. Hello, get me rent in, in. Camera two. Hello, rent in. <laughs> Here now are the haunting voices of Georgie Fame and Alan Price, as opposed to their singing voices. Ah, yes, matey, we've been on many a trip together, haven't we? Me, me, me. On many a trip together. Our lad, and do you know my name? No, what is your name? My name is Long John Silver. Ah, Long John Silver. Ah, the spitting image of my dad. Yeah, honey, man, I know I am, lad. You and I play this forever. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. And I bet you can't say uh, the prayer about the Bible while I drink this old glass of water while you say it. You sing a song, all right? 
Welcome to television's least inventive and most inoffensive program, your censored film festival. Good evening, and I hope we haven't offended anyone yet. Tonight's film is the great Swedish classic, Virgin Strawberries. It is a story of raw violence, raging emotion, lust and sex. But we've snipped all those bits out because we know what's best for you. Here now is Ingemar Dingelingemar's Virgin Strawberries. Anna. Oh, Anna. Lars, Lars. Yeah, it's getting in my head sick. Anna. Anna. Svenska Anna. Lars. Oh, Anna. Lars. Lars. Anna. Lars. Anna. Lars. Anna. Lars. Anna. Lars. Anna. Lars. Anna. Is mine in space confessed to BB? BB, sister. Ah, BB, Lars. BB. Lars. BB. Lars. Get over my first gong, Lars. BB, it's my first früher schwappedad. Sven, Sven, Sven. Sven. Oh, yes, it is a puska. Ah, hide the babskas. Baby. Oh, baby. It's such a year, it's about the last bit. We hope you've enjoyed tonight's presentation of the Censored Film Festival. Next week, at the same time, you'll be able to see Gregory in Moby. And in the weeks to come, we will feature the films of Alfred Hitch, Lucille and Peter O. This is your host, Hampton Thrust Power, being off. Good night. Well. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, <laughs> no,
Yeah. <laughs> 